You're listening to The Digital Deep Dive, where we tackle the newest trends, strategies, and pain points shaping growth across the digital landscape. From Amazon and D2C to international expansion, join our host and e-commerce leaders across multiple industries for in-depth discussions on how to maximize your brands in the digital arena. Now, here's your host, Aaron Conant. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Digital Deep Dive podcast. I'm your host, and uh, today we're going to have a conversation around getting back to the basics. Um, got a great friend, partner, support of the network for, I don't know, pretty much, I think, since we kicked this off, uh, Michael Zakor over at Five New Digital. Uh, and, and we're recently doing a webinar together, and we just started getting um, into a great discussion around the current state and monitoring What's taken place over the past few years, the number of new players that have jumped in, the number of new service providers, you know, potential tactics, strategies, trends, pain points, whatever it might be. And yet getting back to the basics was key. And so, um, you know, Michael, I'm going to kick it over to you. Uh, if you want to do a brief intro on yourself and Five New Digital, that would be awesome. Uh, thanks for jumping on and allowing me to pick your brain for the next hour or so. Uh, but yeah, I'll kick it over to you, Michael. Yeah, thanks, Aaron. It's good to be back on as always. Uh, my name is Michael Zakor. I'm the founder and chief strategist at Five New Digital. Um, we are a research and strategy firm focused on retail, uh, e-commerce, integrated commerce, the new re retail model, unified commerce. We work with global brands, retailers, CPGs, manufacturers, and tech companies on navigating um, what's turning out to be now an entirely disrupted e-commerce, digital commerce, and retail um, universe. So, you know, if we look back to how e-commerce initially disrupted retail over the last 10, 15 years, uh, we see e-commerce itself being disrupted. Um, we've seen, I think, some slowdowns in the e-commerce universe, and we'll talk a little bit about why. Uh, I think part of that is people forgetting the basics. So, um, that's who I am and that's what we do and looking forward to a, a good chat with you, Aaron. Yeah. Uh, no, always a pleasure to have you on, Michael. Um, so what do you see when we think about getting back to the basics? You know, I was highlighting just some of the stuff that I've seen, especially the new technology, the new service provider side, like everybody's got a silver bullet that's going to, you know, help you easily win, uh, you know, increase conversion and, you know, I think sometimes people have gotten lost. Um, I shouldn't say lost. They're drowning in the potential, quote unquote, opportunities that are out there of partnerships to make and strategies and everything else. Um, and you were just mentioning like the e-commerce universe a little bit. Like, how do you how do you parse that apart? Yeah, I, I listen, you know, I this is my purpose in life. I, I wake up and I live and breathe um, what's happening in technology and retail and you know, my job is to absorb all that information, parse it, separate the real from from the vapor and, you know, bring the best of that to my clients so that they can profitably grow. And, you know, I think getting back to basics starts with being profitable. <laughs> right. Um, we, we've seen so many service providers or brands who have spent the last five or 10 years um, incentivized to grow and grow and grow at the expense of, um, you know, profit and margin. Um, so getting back to basics is we're in business to make money, right? So we start there. And the question then is, okay, in this retail, this integrated retail environment where, um, listen, it, it's done now, right? The, 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 the cat's out of the bag. You have to integrate online and offline and technology and content and supply chain to be successful today, right? That's that's just table stakes. Um, what I think is getting lost is how do we make a profit doing it? Um, some of the basics of just good branding, you know, I think the obsession with performance marketing hmm. has uh, had a, a detrimental effect on the growth and sustainability uh, where brands and retailers and, and CPGs come into play. Um, and, and I think, listen, we're all being drowned um, in information and um, new technologies, new offers. So I, I think what's happening is e-commerce itself, digital commerce right now is going through a disruption 
that's not too far off from the disruption that e-commerce actually caused in the retail industry over the last 10, 15 years. And so brands, retailers, CBGs have to ask themselves, what's different? Why is this not working? How do we grow? Um, how do I, my God, deal with, you know, uh, cost of consumer acquisition that's just gone through the roof? How do I deal with, you know, digital advertising that is, you know, questionable at best um, in results? And, and how do I deal with, you know, disrupted logistics and fulfillment? And so my answer is you go back to the basics and you say, if you're a retailer, a brand, CPG, and whether you're selling online, offline, or you have it well integrated, you still have the same mission, right? Drive traffic, drive conversions, drive basket size, and then the hardest part of all, drive retention and lifetime value. And so getting back to basics is, how do we do that? Yeah, I want to pick a couple of those things. Uh, just dive a little deeper because, I mean, every one of those ways is, is where money is going out the door. And I think you're right. The profitability piece is key, right? For years now, you could operate an unprofitable business and money just kept flowing in. There's a next round of investment. There's new PE, VC money that was out there pouring in and say, hey, just keep growing. And at some point in time, we can turn on the profit spigot. Well, if you didn't already turn it on, now a lot of these companies are, um, I don't know if reeling is the right word, but they're, they're taking a step back, doing exactly what you're talking about is, number one, we're in business to make money. Um, and so one of those, though, is when you're talking about, um, even on the fulfillment aspect, I still have people trying to ship out of a single warehouse in you know, maybe it's on the East Coast, maybe it's on the West Coast and trying to use a single one to hit the entire U.S. and not realizing these, you know, for deployment of inventory. I mean, we, we have a friend, right? Um, you know, Corey, uh, actually the episode before this one, uh, Da Vinci Micro Fulfillment, mm -hmm. uh, has a brilliant business model and literally saving people money uh, by four to point inventory. And I know you have a ton of experience in, in that space. Any thoughts around the fulfillment aspect where people, um, you know, can save dollars. Yeah. I listen with fulfillment. Um, you know, I've long held the view that fulfillment is as important a part of the consumer journey and experience, um, as any other that's closer to the top or the middle of the funnel. Right. Um, Listen, whether you're in a physical store or you're receiving a package, the the, the wow moment, this you know, the uh, oxytocin, the, the 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 thrill comes with you having the product in your hand, mm -hmm. right? And so, how that product is delivered to you, when it's delivered to you, what that experience is, is really really important. And you know, the big problem that that we all have as 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 merchants is it costs a lot to go fast, right? So service levels and fulfillment, you can be fast and expensive or you can be slow and cheap. Um, that's number one. Number two, um, you have to now really can get back to basics and say, not every customer wants it in one day or two days, right? And so I think brands and retailers need to step back and say, we need to offer more options and have a tiered approach to fulfillment. Um, you know, some people want it in two days, you know, some people could take a sweater for five days and that's fine. Um, and so, you know, really finding the right tiered approach, the right solution providers, and, you know, the customer experience through fulfillment is, is so important. And, you know, that's getting back to basics, just, you know, providing delight at the moment that the customer takes possession of the product no matter what habitat they're shopping in. Yeah. I mean, I mean, to that point, I mean, Amazon's done that at checkout, right? You get the option. Do you want a one, two, three dollar, you know, prime video credit, digital content credit, if you'll take this on Saturday or Thursday as opposed to the next day uh delivery? Yeah, well, on that point, I think on it was May 4th or 5th, Amazon announced a new program. Uh, where they will pay you $10 if you come and pick up uh, your product. 
<laughs> so, I mean, on orders of $25 or more, but, you know, that's incredible. If you think about that, um, you know, I can buy a $30 product, go pick it up myself and, and get $10 back for it. And, and that's just indicative, right? And you and I always talk about this. Your, your two um, profit margin um, decretion points are the cost of consumer acquisition and the cost of fulfillment, right? And so getting back to basics, you know, is saying my two great enablers um, for my business, whether I'm a brand or a retailer or a CPG or a manufacturer, are all things tech, IT, data science. Now, some people would argue an AI on one side. And then the other great um, enabler is operations, supply chain, logistics, and fulfillment. If you get the cost structure and the people, processes, and technology right for those two great enablers, now you can go up the pyramid towards profitability. And what, what you fill that pyramid in with is spoiling the consumer, right? That one demand that the consumer has, spoil me or else I will find a brand, a retailer, an online platform who will. Right. So, but you got to start with those enablers. That's getting back to basics, um, telling great stories, providing great content. And most of all, um, especially when it comes to digital commerce, we all have to work hard and the tools are there now to turn it from a two dimensional flat screen, scrolling click buying experience to an immersive shopping, social fun experience. And it's that transition, that evolution, which is at the heart of the e-commerce disruption we're going through right now. How do you transition from e-commerce to immersive commerce? How do you evolve from omni-channel, which is just having several channels, to unified commerce? Yeah, I think, and you've kind of championed that, that word, um, un unified commerce. Uh, because it is, and I like that differentiation because as everybody's exploded into omni-channel over the past few years, we now have this point where it seems like things are calming down just a little bit, that things are slowing down. And, you know, from a business aspect, everybody wants to keep growing at a rapid pace and doubling year over year. But in reality, a lot of e-com teams are taking a deep breath and saying, finally, all right, now, how do we connect everything, right? How is... How are all these uh, different systems working together? Um, you know, we've got a great partner over at Day's End uh, Consulting, huge Shopify consultant, not building websites, but the sole function is to go in, right, and analyze the tech stack, rationalize it out, and then build it and connect everything that needs to be connected and talking that's not today. And just that simple task, although you, you, you have a high upfront cost, um, the back end, it's like near immediate ROI, uh, because everybody's stuck in every tool. I mean, we were talking a bit, little bit before the, you know, this call, um, you know, around how much technology has popped up over the past few years, because, you know, new capital was everywhere and everybody was trying to find the next best thing. Uh, you know, and the reality is a lot of it was, you know, as you were saying, right. A solution looking for a problem. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And going around saying, hey, you know, I think you have a problem. Look at I can fix it. And people didn't even know they had the problem, but then they were worried that they might have the problem. So they just signed up for it. And now we have these, you know, grossly inflated tech stacks and just needs rationalization. Again, getting back to the profitability piece, um, but also mm -hmm. getting to everything's connected, right? Like you're taking the data feeds and you're analyzing the different inputs from all the different places that you're selling. Uh, selling and advertising. Uh, so crazy. Yeah, listen, when I founded Five New Digital four years ago, <laughs> you saw it, you were, you were there for the birth. Um, the front page of our capabilities deck said unified commerce. We help you unify everything. We integrate your online, your offline, your technology, your supply chain, and your content to build an ecosystem. This company was born for that purpose um, in tandem with helping companies uh, navigate the new retail model, 
Um, and, you know, we've been hyper focused for the last couple of years on building this immersive commerce um, program and experience. Um, you know, that that's been a huge growth engine for our business where companies are finally saying, oh, there are things I can do now. Right. To really make a difference. Where where am I going to make a difference? Decreasing CAC, decreasing logistics costs. Right. And, and you know, live streaming today uh, with today, May 10th, uh, front page of the New York Times uh, had a story about live streaming. <clears throat> and uh, all the benefits that it brings to brands and retailers. Uh, again, we, we've been doing live streaming in our shop for, for six years. You know, we've been big advocates of it. Why? Um, it's proven that conversion rates are 30 to 40%. Return rates are 10% versus 40%. Um, and, and most importantly, when we do a live stream, um, especially from the flagship stores of our brand and retail clients, the, the most amazing metrics isn't how many products we sold in that hour. It's we look at the numbers in the four weeks following and we see foot traffic in the physical store increase 35 percent. We see visits to the website increase 40 percent. We see conversion rates bump up to 10 to 15 percent for two months. So, you know, for a couple thousand dollars in an iPhone, um, you've just brought your CAC down from maybe four hundred dollars down to 15 um, and you have a much higher conversion rate and a much better experience in building uh, LTV. So that that's just live streaming. That's one example. Um, yeah, when you get into like when you say immersive commerce, like do you want to what do you what do you mean by immersive commerce? Is people are, you know, taking some notes. Like, yeah, is it, so, it is live streaming. Uh, it's uh, yeah. So it, the the. I, I kind of coined the phrase immersive commerce about two years ago. Um, and it was the result of my having conversation after conversation with retail executives, C-suite guys at brands, really, really smart e-commerce people. And, you know, asking questions about what is the metaverse. And, you know, that was all we heard for about a year, year and a half was metaverse, metaverse, metaverse. And w what I found was um, people thought that the metaverse was just a place to go and build a 3D immersive environment that we'd all live in and we'd have goggles and we would do our taxes and shop and have parties in there. And that just did not resonate with brand owners and retailers and CPGs. That's not a world they were prepared to build or operate in, okay? Uh, what I did was I shifted the conversation. My aha moment was with all the trillions of dollars that have been put into building digital commerce tools, measurement tools, ad tools, um, there's one thing that hasn't changed in 15 years for the most part. And that is the experience of shopping online. Like I said, it's 2D, it's a flat screen, it's scroll, click, scroll, click, scroll, click, maybe buy, right? And immersive commerce is about bringing the experience and the tools that make it a social two-way street. So live streaming, shoppable video, pre-recorded shoppable video, um, product uh, images that are 3D and you're able to manipulate them. Um, AR, geez, guys, it's so easy, right? Put the AR in your app on your phone and let somebody point their phone at their feet and see 200 pairs of sneakers on their feet uh, or let them point you know, at their wrist and see what 10 different watches look like. And, and so what I think is what we're really seeing is my idea is you take the metaverse and you put it in a corner and you say that's something that is developing and will mature over the course of several years. And it's going to have something to do with the plumbing and how the front end of the Internet looks. OK, in the meantime, the real action to lower CAC, increase traffic, increase conversions, et cetera, is in immersive commerce. So I'll just give you one example. Um, if you go to the Kiehl's website, which is a masterpiece of, of digital commerce to begin with, they have a button that you can click to enter their virtual store. 
Okay, so you're not leaving the website. You go into the virtual store and it's a photorealistic recreation of a Kiel store. And they have products on the shelves. They have a digital human avatar who's your host. Oh my God, you've actually got somebody in the store working there. They have great quizzes and contests. You can buy if you want. Amazing. So there is a place in retail and digital commerce for virtual environments, right? They're not expecting you to go into the virtual environment and 80% of sales are going to be there. But what it's done is conversion rates for people who go to Kiel's website and go into that store are 16% as opposed to 5% for the people who don't go in. So that's a great example of immersive commerce that you can, you know, another thing I like is Walmart land on Roblox um, mm-hmm. so that you didn't have to. I spent seven hours uh, roaming around there and getting the full experience. And it's really, really good. Um, it's really good. It's fun. They have, um, you know, Netflix inside there. They have movies. They have trivia contests. They have missions and coin collecting. And it's awesome, right? And it really connects you back to the Walmart experience. So immersive commerce is just that, immersing the consumer into your world. We talk about experiential retail. You build that through immersive commerce. And I'll, I'll finish is you have to marry that with what we call 3C integration. How do you marry content, community, and commerce? That is the future, right? So getting back to basics is great experiences, great selection, great prices, great stories, great branding. Um, remember that you're there to connect with people and it's not just about performance marketing. Yeah, no, so true. It's that store, that shopping experience that people do like. I mean, that's one thing that came out of the pandemic. Gary. There's this one side was saying, hey, it's going to change forever. Um, but and it's going to, you know, a lot of retail is going to completely go away. And there was a small portion of it. But, you know, again, you know, one of the phrases that you like to use is a retail renaissance, right? Which is yep. didn't, you know, it wasn't like Armageddon for all of retail and it went away. Um, we had some players that that didn't manage it well. Um, we're still seeing players not manage it well, uh, you know, recently with like Bed Bath & Beyond and everything that's going on there. but there's a good chunk of stores that are still around retailers that are still around and are winning. Uh, and I think they will be around uh, for a long time, but, but again, it's a constant evolution, right? And right. it's so, staying on top of things. When, when I brought the unified commerce idea to the fore about five years ago, my primary statement was physical stores will matter. It will continue to matter. And they are of extreme importance and they are still the centerpiece of the integrated retail world, right? And what happened seven years ago, six years ago, when all the headlines were about the retail apocalypse, every stage or microphone I got in front of, I said, no, we have a store apocalypse where, yes, tens of thousands of old school legacy retailers are closing their stores. And the problem is the term store and retail are not interchangeable. Retail is everywhere. And retail has grown exponentially after the last over the last 10 years. It's everywhere, right? It's on your laptop. It's on your phone. Um, it's in sophisticated vending machines. Retail is everywhere. In fact, I'm working with a company right now who is empowering influencers to be retailers. So instead of the re- the influencer getting paid to promote a brand or do a video about a brand, um, they actually now with a with a simple QR code can go into any store anywhere, scan that code, and while they're talking to their hundred thousand um, followers, those followers can buy that product in screen in real time. And why this is effective is because the followers really see that. The influencer is showing them how they like to shop and where they live and they're buying what they want, not what they're being paid to hawk. Right. And how does it work? The retailer pays the influencer a commission. So we see now, oh, my God, 
actual people are going to become retailers, right? So not not just you know a hundred channels, people can be retailers. Um, and so that's boy, if that's not immersive, I don't know what is. Yeah, it's almost like you know, you know, and it's easier for smaller companies, but for larger organizations, larger brands, they need this time. They they need like a digital retreat. They need to step away from the business for two or three days and take a deep breath and then reevaluate everything that's possible. Because what you're describing is a fundamental change that has to take place. It's easier for small and medium businesses to do it than it is for large organizations. They just can't. But they need the full-blown plan. Here's all the possibilities. Here's all the partners that actually work. They they've survived. They're you know they're beyond Series C. Uh, they're they're big enough. You can connect with them. Uh, and oh by the way, here's the integration plan. And every place is gonna is gonna affect within your organization. And here's the training. Yeah, I it's mean, a full blown plan that they that they need because I don't see kind of what you're describing you know, large organizations jumping headfirst into it because trying to connect a buy in real time platform to the back end of your ERP is going to be tough. (laughs) And then paying out, right? A commission fee, an affiliate fee to this, Mm -hmm. um, you know, influencer is going to be tough to figure it out. um, Big organizations are, are capable of doing this. Um, I know that because we're doing it for, <laughs> you know, they're coming to us yeah, and everybody just needs like, to meet you. That's well, I, I don't know. <laughs> you need, that, to, but you, it, you need you to clone know. yourself like 50 times. <laughs> well, it's the core of what we do. And, and, you know, some effective steps that we take with them is first, we just, we do a unified commerce readiness or maturity audit. Okay. And we say, you know, based on the new retail model and unified commerce, where do you stand? Then we audit you for immersive commerce. We audit you for your marketing tech stack, right? And we, we kind of give you that current state as is state assessment. And then we develop the plan, the strategy, and the tactics to deal with the new consumption, the new retail, the new technology, the new supply chain that's required to thrive today. Um, and there are some companies who are really going for it. Um, you know, they're, they're out there, they're doing this. Uh, yes, more of them should be doing it. Uh, and and again, you know, announcement today on May 10th, party city is going to close another 30 stores, Hmm. um, because they, they haven't integrated their online offline experience. And so again, that's getting back to basics, the new basics, which is how do you make the online experience more like the physical experience? And then how do you integrate technology to enhance the in-store physical experience, right? So take advantage of the retail renaissance, storytelling, good branding, customer service, right? The basics of retail. Yeah, there's new tools. There's new tools to do it. Yeah, use the new tools, but get back to the basics. (laughs) You know, that's, one of those new tools, that's it. We, we can't not talk about chat, GPT, AI, like, so I, and I'll give you kind of the rundown of what I'm hearing from brands, which is, you know, kind of the, you know, we're using it for the first, eight, first 80%, right? It's going to help write con- copy, but I still need to go back in and fine tune the copy. It's a mm-hmm. little bit off brand, but at least it gets that first 80% done. Uh, which isn't always the hardest. So of getting the first 80% done, they say, hey, it makes me somewhere around 14 to 20% more productive in doing that. Mm -hmm. Um, But that's where I see people using it today is not full-blown, wind it up, let it go and pray for the best. But hey, get this first chunk done and then I'll take it and I'll iterate on it on my own. And I'll get that next chunk done and then I'll take it and iterate on it uh, on my own. And that's where people are using it today. And I just, I say that to, to set a baseline. I, I know there's some, you know, people way ahead of that and how they're using it. Um, even people integrating it into their personal lives. I had multiple people plan entire vacations using it. Say, hey, I want to go from here to here. This is my budget. This is how many days and I'm driving. 
help mm. plan the vacation and it mm. will be pretty much dead on. <laughs> it's pretty, mm. it's pretty interesting, but where do you see AI mm. coming in right now? Yeah. Well, I, mean, I think it goes without saying we're, we're just at the birth stage um, <laughs> of figuring out, you know, uh, look, listen, AI has been with us for a long time, but it's largely been in the hands of massive technology companies um, who are using it to, you know, build algorithms um, and, and, you know, self-learning algorithms. The, the big thing that happened six months ago is it's been put in the hands of everyday people like you and me. Um, so you could be a small boutique consulting firm uh, or a small up and coming brand. And my God, you have this power of artificial intelligence, right? Um, you know, it, it, it is going to, in my opinion, have a major impact um, on the retail and e- e-commerce industries. You know, starting with what you talked about, content. Um, most brands and, and CPGs, their biggest problem is they need to create massive amounts of content. Uh, I was talking to the CTO of one of the biggest uh, cosmetics retailers in the world a couple of weeks ago, and he said every time they do a campaign, they need 2,000 pieces of a content for a national campaign. Um, wow, that's a lot of content. And, you know, he's already using artificial intelligence to help, you know, make up ground on those. Um, you know, if you look at uh, what some other companies are doing, one that just blew me away was a few weeks ago, I got an email from from Open Table, um, And, you know, I use them to, to book. And they announced that they're integrating chat GPT into open table to make restaurant uh, recommendations. So <laughs> I think that was a really interesting one because it was an easy integration that created a value added service right off the bat for them. Um, and, you know, it, it would recommend based on your history, but more importantly, it recommends on your prompts. You know, I want uh, an Asian fusion where they, you know, create delicate uh, pretty, you know, sushi pieces, whatever it might be. Um, I think another, another company that's doing something interesting, um, North Face, uh, is using IBM's Watson, uh, cognitive computing technology. So you, it will, you can have a conversation with the AI about where you plan on wearing these clothes in the coat. Um, what kind of activities you'll be doing. I'm hiking, I'm camping, I'll be in a sleeping bag. Um, and then North Face actually makes personalized recommendations. So we talk about personalization, which we all know we, you know, we're not at the point, we weren't at the point where you could do real one-on-one customization, right? You could do it in groups. Well, now AI can actually customize the product recommendation for you based on the prompts. Uh, one more that I like is Neiman Marcus has already implemented it. Um, they're doing a, a something called the Snap. Uh, it's a snap find shop. It's an app that lets you take pictures of items that you see while you're out and about anywhere. Um, and then it searches the entire Neiman Marcus inventory to find the same item or a similar item and put it right in front of you for a one click buy. Um, so, you know, pretty, pretty cool stuff that that's already being implemented. Um, you know, I, I just think from also, you know, just optimizing data. Right. We, 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 we've we heard for years that data is the new oil. The problem is we, we spill thousands of gallons of oil into the uh, metaphorical ocean. Right. Uh, every month we have all this data. Some of it flows out and doesn't get used. Um, so, you know, optimizing your media strategy, optimizing retail media, optimizing product placement, optimizing fulfillment. All of these things are going to impact um, how we, you know, operate digital commerce and retail and has to be part of that conversation of um, getting back to basics, but realizing that there are tools out there and channels out there that you have to deal with and and integrate it into your your basics. Yeah, I always think about it from the standpoint of, you know, the people who are executing. you know, they've got the the double job of executing as as well as, um, you know, teaching upwards within the organization. 
And I, lo- I do love the back to the basics because you can essentially go to the leadership team and say, listen, the ideals around what we want to do have not changed, but how we're doing them has, and we need to do them and the partners we need to do this with have completely changed. And that doesn't mean that what you did in the past was wrong, right? You made the best decision at that point in time. And we all have the same goal, which is to grow this company. And now those players have just changed. And, you know, because I think a lot of times leadership teams get a little, I don't know, defensive that, you know, maybe they don't understand digital quite as well. Um, maybe, you know, they don't know the players quite as well. They don't know how to gauge if something's a success or not. And therefore they resist the change, uh, out of the lack of knowledge and, or Mm. or just, you know, being defensive. Uh, Hey, I did what I, you know, these are the people that I chose like, yes, you know, you're telling me they're wrong. And then, and the answer is they're wrong now, but they weren't wrong when you chose them. We just need to adapt. We just need to adapt. That is so right. I mean, everything you said there is right. And um, this morning I saw a tweet um, and the woman said, uh, the problem with upselling or explaining to management um, how to market to Gen Z is that there's no degree uh, or no experience except spending thousands of hours on social with Gen Z that's how you come up with the right marketing plan for them. Um, so, yeah, I mean, a, a lot of this, and I think, you know, it, it starts at the top uh, and it should be, you know, through the organization to say, look, our job is to be focused on the consumer or the customer a hundred percent. We've always done that, but the ground has changed, but our basics are serve the customer and as a business to get profitable through traffic, conversions, basket size, subscription, and LTV. That's always been the goal. Those are the basics. Good branding, throw it in. But the landscape has changed. And if you don't move towards unified commerce, and you don't move towards immersive commerce, and you don't embrace the intersection of data science and AI, you're going to have a hard time keeping up. Um. I've been picking your brain for the past, I don't know, 40 minutes or so. Um, any questions for me? I, thanks for letting me pick your brain. <laughs> yeah. I always like no, to carve I, out some time um, at the end for kind of like the ask Aaron. Yeah. And, you're, uh, you know, you're, you're in such a unique position. Um, you know, you literally talk to a thousand brands and, and retailers and CPG people um, every year. So I, I'd just be curious to, um, find out where, you know, where you're hearing pain points. Um, You know, what are brands and retailers and CPGs telling you that, you know, here's where we're really struggling and here's where, you know, having a hard time finding the solutions on one side. And then I'd also be interested to hear, um, you know, I think there's a a bit of a culling of service providers. You know, there's been maybe uh, a saturation on it. I'd be interested in that too, but maybe just starting with, you know, what are the brands and retailers telling you? Where where are their pain points? I mean, number one, you nailed it, which was profitability. And so where are they looking to solve it? Um, first place, it was just e-commerce as a whole is Amazon. Um, the chargeback fines recovery spot of Amazon is just exploding right now. It was a profit center, I would say, for Amazon for a long time. Uh, now there's enough tech out there that you can just crunch through it pretty quick. Um, so people are trying to, as we think about profitability, that's it. I mean, you're right on the pulse of it as well. The the um, fulfillment aspect. Um, there's, I don't think people realize, especially as something that's a little bit heavier, uh, you can actually go with one of these digital age 3PLs like a Da Vinci and save money. And they don't realize that. They think, hey, I'm building somebody else in. No, if you can forward deploy that inventory and get it to the end consumer, that's something that they want. That's, you know, maybe it's a beverage or something. Like people don't want to wait five days. They they had the need, they ordered it, they want it to show up the next day. Maybe they're running now. Um, so the fulfillment aspect of it, um, you hit customer acquisition costs are through the roof. Um, Facebook not performing like it used to. 
Amazon, um, the PPC side of Amazon is a whole lot more expensive. I, I have brands that, you know, if I talked to them, you know, seven months ago, their uh, PPC to DSP budget on Amazon was, mm. I'll say, 35, 65. So mm. 35% DSP, 65% PPC. That's inverted now. It's 65% DSP. Um, because they just uh, for the audience sake, if everybody doesn't know what DSP is, maybe just, uh, you know, hit on that first. Yeah. Second. It's their demand side platform for advertising. So think of, it's not the banner ads that pop up right there, but the ones that follow you around, um, you know, there's so much inventory there and you can be so specific that you get away from, you know, all the muddiness. So if anybody looks at an Amazon search query now, you know, and you type in socks, Seven of the 10 results are going to be ads, it seems like. Maybe it's only mm -hmm. six, but mm -hmm. um, you get out of the muddiness of all those ads that are there. Uh, so that's something that they're addressed. And then, I mean, it, you know, right now people are doing a massive evaluation of their tech stacks. Um, you know, what's going on in direct consumer. I signed up for, you know, 85 different things. Uh, over the pandemic that I thought I needed. And now I realize I'm not using, you know, two thirds mm -hmm. of them. And then the one third that I do need, it was so overwhelming to connect them to everything. I didn't connect them to anything. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, that's where like um, a day's end has been coming in a lot, helping people out. Like, what does that rationalization look like? Um, you know, that one thing that I think, and, you know, and you and I were chatting about this a little bit beforehand, the the connected TV, the OTT CTV um, paid media space, streaming ads. Um, when we talk about ad fraud, it's almost as big as it is on the traditional um, mm -hmm. you know, paid search social side. And that it's just massive, probably in the billions uh, of dollars that are not hitting the targeted audience. And we're seeing new players pop up that take the place of the trade desk mm -hmm. and actually can deliver the you know the the ad to you know the person on a roku device streaming a britbox show that likes keels mm -hmm. you can give them that ad and right. you're not hitting 100 people around it you're not hitting everybody in that zip code you're hitting that person and therefore there's going to be a drastic reduction in overall spend it, but it all gets back to like you said at the beginning it, it's profitability because all the costs are going up across the board mm -hmm. um how much money people have to spend is going down and so you're battling you know for that dollar with multiple other brands and it's uh it's fewer dollars than it used to be yeah and i you know <sighs> You could take a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of that money that you're spending that's really not doing what you think it's supposed to be doing and take a month or two to step back, you know, get get a couple of good minds in um, and reassess where you at, you know, where you're at, how to get back to basics yeah. and, and say how what what are the people, processes, tools, technologies and channels that will really give me ROI. Um, that's not filtered by six agencies by the yes. time it gets back to you. Um, and they exist. And so this is what, you know, built, you know, Keels going back to Keels virtual store, right? For, for a very modest investment, you're getting real time data. You're getting higher conversion, right? Live streaming, same thing. You're getting first party data higher conversions, lower returns, lower reverse logistics. And so, you know, as we come close to the end of the hour, you know, I just can't emphasize enough that it's a time to step back and say, how does unified commerce, immersive commerce, and the three C's, content, community, commerce, you know, what do I do that? How do I get the basics of retail right in that environment? No, I, I totally agree. And, you know, Michael, thanks. I mean, you're helping a ton of brands out in, in the network and there's, I don't know, we're approaching 9,000 at this point in time. Yep. So yep. I do appreciate how much you pour into the community as well. 
anybody who's listening, uh, Michael Support, Five New Digital. Uh, follow him on LinkedIn. Check out his website. He's just helping a ton of brands, you know, moderate this ever changing, more rapidly changing space than ever before. Um, worth a follow uh, if you're looking for help in any of that area. If anybody would like to talk, um, you know, I love as as Michael pointed out. Uh, I try to connect with a thousand brands, retailers, organizations every year on digital strategy. Uh, more than happy to spend time. Uh, just ping me on LinkedIn, Aaron Conant, and uh, we'll find time to connect. And with that, uh, we're going to wrap up this episode of the Digital Deep Dive. Uh, thanks, everybody, for your time today. Thanks, Michael.